G'day guys, we're down here at Renmark Big Four. It is a premier Big Four caravan park around Australia. It's right on the mighty Murray River and there are hundreds of boats lined up across the riverbank. There are so many families here all living the dream. It is what we do, is a caravanning lifestyle. But what I thought I'd do is I'd do a short, sharp video and show you around this leader expedition that Cassie and I and Stella now have brought down here and spent the last eight nights at uh, the Renmark Big Four. Come on in. So there is my beautiful baby daughter. She has been such a little champion on this trip. She's uh, perched up there in her little, uh, I think they call it a kahuna baby. Mum's got the uh, I Love Daddy outfit there ready to go. She's decorated the van, loves her interior design in Cass. But we've gone with the opal dark in this layout. Um, obviously Cassie's put her own bedding there and some little dress pillows and whatnot. The girls love that. But uh, we've gone with the black pack. So we've got the black tap wear through here. The timber bench tops, uh, apologies, there's a bit of crap around. We're just cleaning up on our last day before we leave. All white uh, cupboard, um, you know, furniture. We've gone with the opal dark, um, which is the dark upholstery, uh, as opposed, the original opal was an opal light. Um, Cassie wanted the opal light. I thought potentially going bush, it was gonna get a little bit dirty. Um, so we opted for the opal dark in the end. Um, we also took the drainer out of the sink. Um, so what that's actually done, and we just use this little pop-up drainer. So with a black pack, especially being 18 foot six, we've been able to get a whole heap more, um, more bench space in that area. And then this just sits in underneath the, uh, underneath the sink. And then when we're doing the dishes, it just sits up there. So it's a good little area there to prepare. Um, it's got the brand new Dometic uh, Fresh Jet in it as well, which I was a little skeptical of. I did order it with the Ibis 4, um, potentially like a few of you guys, uh, but the Ibis 4 is now uh, no longer, and they're uh, Dometic are moving over to the Dometic Fresh Jet. Uh, and I can say that it's definitely been a real soft start. Uh, it's been 38, 40 degrees up here through the middle of summer uh, here at Renmark, um, and that thing hasn't stopped running the entire time. It's whisper quiet, it's actually on at the moment, uh, and it cools this down beautifully. We just went with the one Sirocco fan. So we've got one Sirocco fan off the end of the overhead cupboard. Doesn't interfere with the television here on the other side there as well. We've also put the pantry in it, um, so which is really cool in the 18 foot six layout. It's jam full of rices and bits and pieces, tin foods. Uh, so that slides out, it's nice and easy to get to. Nuts and pancake mix and jams and whatnot in there. We put the compressor fridge in it. Um, so again, there's always a debate over whether the three-way or compressor um, is the go. Uh, in this particular van, we opted to go uh, with the 12 volt. Um, so this one here is a compressor fridge. Uh, and as you can see, we've still got a lot of food left over that we, uh, that we need to eat. Um, but yeah, nice big, uh, nice big fridge there. Um, we put foot rests on. So I just kind of, I really like, you know, it's not, a, it's not an expensive upgrade, but I really like the look of the upholstered bunk end. So when you, um, you, you know, when you're ordering your van, you do have the option to go through and put a few of these bits and pieces through, um, but it just finishes it off. So instead of it being just a plain um, end wall, you go with the upholstered bunk end, and then with that foot rest, it just pops up there like so. There's a little bracket under there. If you reach down and grab it, that'll just lock in. So uh, my legs hang off, but it's perfect for cars. Um, so that's about it on the inside. Um, again, we went for a full length mirror, which you can't really see that with the camera, but a uh, full length mirror here as well. So you can kind of you know, actually get dressed and, um, and probably see yourself. Um, oh, I know what, I'll show you. Actually, stick your head in here, is this clean? We've got a bit of stuff in here. Let's just pull the bin out. This is where we store our bin, just uh, when we're not showering. Um, so let's just chuck that. Chucked it out there, but if you stick your head in there, they are fusion locks. So I picked them up from Bunnings. I think they are about so fusion lock here on the back of the door. Towels hang up there nicely, and if you peer around the corner, you'll see shampoos, conditioners, body wash, um, you know, razors, whatnot, um, all here on this groovy little fusion lock. Um, so again, um, really, really strong. I think I paid about thirty bucks for it from Bunnings, and it took about you know a couple of minutes to chuck it on. So. Um, you know, that's been an absolute lifesaver. Um, tipped all the men out there, don't forget that. Make sure that goes on today. Um, hand towel, obviously, um, that's just up in the corner, just another fusion lock. Now, I was a little bit skeptical on putting it on the side wall, 
Um, so I actually put it up under the furniture because the ply is only three mil thick, where this is, I think, about 12 or 15 mil thick. Um, so I'll put it up on that, less, uh, less risk of any damage. That's just for the hand towel. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a, a squeeze around. Obviously a big pocket board, book sitting there, love a good book, uh, Sunny's waterfall bench top here as well. Uh, but it's come, around the out, come on the outside. Mate of mine actually come up with a cracker of an idea. For those of you that get annoyed at these dinging little blinds, so because they've got this little metal end on the end, as soon as the wind comes up, they just sit there all day and just carry on like that. He just went and cut a bit of tubing, just picked it up from local auto store, and he just went around, just slid that in there like that. It's not the most attractive thing in the world, but it doesn't annoy you when it's, uh, when it's sitting there now. And always gone, so I'm just going to carry that around. I'll chuck it in a drawer, and um, yeah, when we pull up, we'll, we'll have that there. Um, I always pull the Waco or the Dometic fridge um, out of the back of the cruiser, it's just a bit easier. I prefer to, instead of having a drinks fridge inside the main van, I prefer that just to be food, keep all your, your veggies and, and whatnot in there. Uh, and then just for a beer fridge, I, I put this outside in the in the Dometic. Um, I just find that, you know, the, the internal fridges, if you're opening and shutting them all day long, they don't like it, especially when it's 38, 39 degrees, they can then struggle and then you potentially lose, you know, potentially lose some food um, or not perform at its best. But um, yeah, down onto the, uh, I think this is a 60 litre um, CFX, so that, it's now Dometic, Dometic bought out Waco, but still called a Waco. It's a dual thermostat. So that sits there as well. This navigator gear is awesome. Um, so the team at Navigator, you know, have done an absolutely ripper job with all that, all that they have. You know, there's a campsite here and behind us. I see these guys have a lot of navigator stuff there, there as well, the chairs and whatnot. Um, but basically they do bins. This is a little wine cooler. So uh, not a wine cooler, a um, wine glass carrier. So basically stop your wine glasses smashing around. You put your wine glasses in there. This one here is a collapsible bin um, by Navigator. So again, this is just an outside bin. I have the other one there as an inside bin. Um, normally chuck a bin bag in there, but we're just obviously preparing to leave today. Coffee machine comes with us everywhere we go. Um, love a good coffee. This is just a little Nespresso pod machine. It's nice and easy. Uh, and it actually fits beautifully underneath the L-shaped seat. So I'll just lift up the, um, lift up the cushion. There's a little flap and it will just fit in there um, nicely as well. One thing that I will say, which is a little bit frustrating, um, and I actually didn't know this, is the 240 volt point on the tellies, so the TVs that we're selling out of Adelaide RV with the NCE, 28 inch TV NCE, which, you know, NCE is a really popular brand in this game. Um, the actual 240 volt lead, I could be running on 12 volt, but we're in a caravan park here. The 240 volt lead, because it's one of those fat block 240 volts, actually doesn't fit into the 12, uh, into the 240 volt um, socket inside of the TV box. Um, so I've just run another lead out, and it's not a, no biggie, you know, we're talking first world problems when you're on a caravan trip. Um, but it's um, now just sitting into a little four block. It hasn't worked too bad because then I've just plugged in some charges and the coffee machine into that as well. But yeah, TV there in behind us, cricket's on, what are we? None for 18, Warner's last test. This is a, um, I don't really know what they call that, but it's a little portable bassinet. Um, it just rocks there as well. So Stella's had an absolute ball and that's all we've done. So because she's only, what is she now? She's five weeks old. Uh, so she's five, uh, five weeks old on Monday. We didn't worry about getting a bunk van straight away. Um, so this we just take in and out each night uh, and she goes into there. Uh, she's actually slept really well. So she's had a couple of three and four hour stints, which at five weeks old for all the parents out there will know that's not a bad effort. So she's settled into caravan life really, really well. Um, the other thing I've done is I dual switch the outside lights. Um, so they've also got the red in them as well. So if I can try and work out what lights what. So if we see that, it goes to the red light, um, which is obviously for the bugs. So that goes to the bright light, that goes to the red light. Um, so we've had that on quite, I actually forgot about it one night. I stayed on all night. Um, moving around, team at ARB hook us up with a lot of stuff for the cruiser. Um, so obviously the cruiser's all decked out with ARB stuff, got ARB draw systems, um, base rack, side steps, um, ARB um, bull bar at the front. Um, and again, I just stick with supporting the guys down at ARB. They're a great bunch of lads down there at Regency Park, um, Adrian and his team. Um, so yeah, stick with the ARB stuff there. These little portable tables, um, something else, just found at Bunnings. Um, so a lot of your tables, you've got to actually snap them in half. 
um, which are just big and bulky in the tunnel. And because of this only being a smaller van, the hot water system's up in the, actually up in the front corner as, as opposed to being down the back corner, which means I only have a three quarter tunnel boot. I do have the front boot, so the lift up flap on the front, but the tunnel boot only goes through three quarters with a door on one side. I, if I'm gonna upgrade again, I would probably upgrade to the um, door on each side just for convenience of getting things in and out. But these tables are 500 wide by a meter long, and I just put them two side by side, and then this other little fold up, um, little fold up seat that I found as well, and they just stack in that tunnel boot beautifully. So the tunnel boot I reckon was about 530 wide, and these are 500, so they just nice snug fit straight through. I've had a few comments on the awning, um, but anytime I go, I'll always have one area which is the back of the site, and I'll always leave this arm in. Um, so it's a Dometic awning, um, and I'll always leave this one arm fixed back here um, into the van, so that's the strongest position. I then always put your anti-flap kits on as well, and then that way, when the wind comes up, you don't have to worry, they can just stay out all the time. I'm not a massive fan of tie downs because they can destroy the ratchet up inside. If you put too much weight on them, there's a little ratchet up inside of the Dometic um, roller here, which you can actually, there's a little roll pin in there. And if you pull down too tight, you can snap that roll pin. If you snap that roll pin, you're really in the ship because you won't get it in or out, right? So I'll, I always opt for the anti-flap kit and then just making sure I have one arm nice and solid back in here into the van. And then up the other end, which is where we're coming in and out. So that's our access point. I'll always put one leg down and I'll peg that leg down. And that just means we're not walking around. You know, I'm always in a hurry and I'll smack my head on the end of the awning arm. Um, so that's yeah, just kind of how we set it up. Everyone's different. Obviously everyone has their own views and opinions on it. Um, I've just seen these things snap in the past. So I tend to not tie them down. If you do tie them down, which I know lots, if you look around the caravan park, most people will. If you do tie them down, my suggestion would be don't put any weight on it. So just pull it till it's a little taut and then peg that in. Don't actually ratchet it so it's coming all the way down because if you really pull that down nice and tight, you can do some damage up in that roller. Um, so that's just a little hot tip there. Um, but that's about it on the outside, guys. I'm not really sure what else I can kind of run through. Um, most of the stuff you know, on this is then um, just standard with the Leader Expedition. So apart from changing those lights over, uh, what else, compressor fridge, that's about it really. Um, everything else is a standard feature on the leader range. Um, and again, such an affordable, you know, um, you know, you're getting into one of these things for, you know, below 100K. So, you know, to have what it's got in it, um, in a full off-road caravan, you know, it's, uh, it's really good. I did put lithium in it as well. Um, lithium is an upgrade. They do just kind of keep the cost down. So they put AGMs in a standard, um, but I've put lithium in this as well. And I think it's got about 600 watt of solar on the roof. So. For what we do, we only ever stay out and about for, you know, 10 days at a time max, um, so that's fine. Just up here on the front of the van as well, I just wanna show one thing that I done um, with this particular van is I upgraded to the deflector stone guard. So as standard um, on all of the vans, the stone guard just comes the entire way through. Um, so I can show you that on another van where the way the stone guard will come through and it does just jam up on this jockey wheel. Um, so sidewinder jockey wheel, but it makes it hard to get it in and out. So what we did is we opted for the cutout Okay, so you do pay a bit more for it. These are an expensive guard. I think they're an additional five or 600 bucks, um, but I thought it was money well spent um, and upgrade to this Sidewinder Jack. And then you can just crank the handle, take the jockey wheel on and off without having that guard come all the way through. Um, so again, if that's something that you're interested in, you know, you can reach out and we can have a chat around, you know, potentially upgrading to that deflector guard. Um, it just makes life so much easier, which you'll see when we go to hook on um, later on today. New wireless cameras, they actually work a treat. So um, other hot tip as well, for those of you that are um, new owners uh, of Supreme or Leader Caravans, um, the new uh, wireless cameras, I learned this the hard way, you actually have to have power on on the inside. So if you flick your master switch off, you actually won't be able to link up to the camera at the back. Um, so I was trying to work it out when we first left and I'm going, what on, what on earth is going on here? Um, but yeah, found out that um, if you've got power to the van, that power's up this, that then sends a signal back to the reversing camera inside of the cruiser. Um, and that's also worked a treat. These little things have been cool as well. So they're just little mozzie coils. So I've had them going every night. Um, but yeah, they just kind of twist out and then just burn the little tips of them there. And you just sit them around each corner of the camp. And that's good, but um, but guys, as you know, I don't get out too often. I don't, um, you know, I'm sure there's you know, plenty more hot tips out there for you guys that are traveling full time and you've got some 
you know, you've got some epic setups. I've seen some of the epic setups that you guys have got. So, you know, we only get out a couple of times a year, but there's just a few little things that I like to do. Um, but as I always say, we actually do what it is that we do. So, you know, yes, we're in the caravan game. Yes, that's what we do. Yes, we're, you know, a, a well-renowned dealership there in Adelaide and have been now for quite a long time. Um, but we actually do and practice what we preach. So for those of you in the market for a new caravan, make sure you find yourself, you know, a partner in whatever brand that you do buy that actually do this stuff. Because even for me, you know, in this product, there's been some things that I've found that really annoy me. Um, so, you know, we'll go back to factory and we'll have those conversations with factory around what it is that actually annoys you about certain little things and it's only little things. Um, but yeah, guys, always open to suggestions. So pop in the comment section below. Um, what's your favorite thing when you go caravanning? Feel free to share any tips with me because I'm always open to learning as well. But hope you've enjoyed a little walk through our new leader expedition and we can't wait to see you out on the road in 2024.